What's up everyone, today I'm going to be taking a look at the G.I. Joe Classified series Wrath Nunchuck Baduchi 6 inch action figure. As usual, please like, share, comment, subscribe or even hit that super thanks button. I do appreciate all engagement on my channel. This one is coming really early from my friendly neighborhood store Robo Robo, so shout out to him. I also had this figure as a kid and that was the 3 and 3 quarter inch Ninja Force version. So I'm pretty excited to have a look at this one. A quick look at the box. Up front we have Nunchuck moving into action with a neon skyline in the background. A bit of cool artwork over here as well as the bunch of weapons and accessories he comes with. At the top of the box, we have the G.I. Joe Classified Series logo. Down to the bottom, some product information and the UPC. On the side, he's numbered 80 with a QR code. And down to the back of the box, we have a render of the figure along with the skill chart. And once again, more of his accessories and zoom ins to a couple of details on the figure with more product information at the bottom. And move on, on to that last side. It's a larger version of the artwork. So now, after we have taken a look at the box, it's time to open him up. Out of the box, he's on a cardboard insert. In the background, you see that same black and white version of the artwork. And of course, he comes with an accessory pack in the shape of an ammo box. Once again, number 80. First accessory out of the bag is this little attachment. It is cast in a grey plastic and you can see a little bit of the silver paint coming off from his sword. So you might want to watch out for that. This one has got a fabric texture on it and a bit of brown sort of paint on the end to show a bit of wear and tear. At the top we have a ball joint and this ball plugs into that hole on the back of his head. So you can move this and rotate it all the way and pose it around just as you wish to complete the look of his bandana. It's a little gummy, so you might want to be a little careful as you twist and articulate it around. Next thing out of the bag is a pair of swords and his dagger. All these are cast also in the same dark gray plastic. There's a grip pattern on the hilt and what looks like I think a tiger head, kind of sculpted at the bottom. As we move on to the blade, there's a hit of green and a nice shiny silver for the blade. The silver paint seems to already start to be coming off. And we saw a little bit of that for the strap on his bandana. So you might want to be careful with this paint application. His dagger also has similar details in the grip. However, there's no paint on it. So I kind of wish that they did give this the same deco as the sword. And he's holding his dagger as well as his sword just fine. You can also store the dagger over here on that sheath on his chest. It looks a little weird to me because part of the blade is still sticking out. And also storing those swords on the sheaths on either side of his belt. The fit isn't all too snug, so you do have the option of posing them, whether with the sharp end facing forward or even backward if you want. Next up, he also comes with two nunchucks. These are cast in a soft, gummy, dark grey plastic. And you can see exactly how pliable they are. Decent sculpting details with the same details on the handles as his swords with the grip pattern and also that sort of tiger head. And there's also chains sculpted in the middle. I will have to say that I'm quite disappointed with the way that these nunchucks turn out because they just feel soft and cheap. I do wish they actually put a poseable wire inside so that we could actually hold a pose for some of these nunchucks. Alternatively, Hasbro should have also kind of included some real chains to at least make these nunchucks look real and feel real. And of course, he holds these nunchucks just fine in his hands, but they look quite stupid with zero posability, kind of like he's waving two large sausage links. And because the nunchucks are so soft and gummy, you can bend and chuck them into those couple of loops on the back of his belt like so. Since these look really awkward and pose so badly, this is where they will stay for me. And lastly, out of the accessory bag, we have two claws. These are sculpted clearly for either side of his hands, with the R and L indicators for the right and left. The left side has pretty bad plastic scarring from the molding process, but also would be in the grip of his hands, so it's not a big deal. Beyond the grips, on the outside we have guards for his hands, and also some really long claws. Good work for Hasbro in the packaging to keep the claws straight. However, once again, it's starting to look quite boring with no paint applications over here. Would have definitely benefited from silver on those claws. 
It's a small struggle to fit those claws into his gripping hands, but once you do, they are a very snug fit, holding them quite well, and I like the way he poses with these. Once again, in the G.I. Joe line, we have Nunchuck as an action figure that can store or hold all his accessories, so that is one thing that Hasbro is getting right in this line. Now taking a closer look at his sculpt and paint, I have removed all accessories from his body. Most of it is actually reused from the Storm Shadow action figure. The only new parts are his head sculpt, his arms, as well as those straps and belt. First impressions are that he's already looking quite dull to me, not just from his color scheme, but also in the execution of the paint applications. We've already seen how dull his accessories are, and I have a good feeling that as we take a closer look at the details on his outfit, it's probably gonna be the same. Take Storm Shadow for example, he's mostly a white ninja, but he's got a little bit of those details, like the paints for the details of the strap across his chest, as well as the little bit of weathering around his gloves, as well as his boots. And that makes the figure look interesting and pop against just all that white. However, we see none of that wash or weathering effects on Nunchuck. His head sculpt is decent, but there's not much that you can achieve for a guy in a mask. It's cast in a dark grey plastic with flesh tone for the area that's exposed around his eyes, sharp paint applications for his eyes as well, but I also do notice a little bit of eyeliner, giving a little bit of that Jack Sparrow vibes or that 80s rocker look. The rest of his headgear is also a rigid plastic, which is also another area of disappointment for me. There's a fabric looking texture to it, but it really is just sculpted frozen and also gets in the way of the range in his neck articulation. I remember back in the day, with that 3 and 3 quarter inch figure, he had fabric soft goods for his headgear, so not getting it today in 6 inch form with better manufacturing and design technology is definitely a letdown. His torso and his arms are mostly cast in the green plastic. The same dark grey paint applications for the tiger stripes that are fairly clean and neat and well applied across his torso as well as his arms. I wanted to say that it's uniformly applied but somehow this part over here seems a little blank to me. Taking a look at those straps and belts, it's the same dark grey plastic, couple of details like the straps and the grenade as well as those sheaths for his dagger and his swords. However, no plain applications and no weathering make these look quite cheap. His newly sculpted arms are accessorized with a couple of armored parts. It's a decent mix of dark grey plastic attachments for the armored parts as well as dark grey paint for the insides where the armored parts are strapped onto his arm. Again, decent detailing in the armor, you can see a pouch on the outside as well, but looking really dull without a weathering or wash. Which I know is possible because we have that little strange hit over here for his headgear, but nothing on the rest of his body. On the back side of the figure, then we see the same tiger stripes that run all the way down. Once again, so fairly cleanly and neatly applied. I do have a problem with his right arm. So for his hand, he's still got the same arrow holding sculpt from Storm Shadow, which is once again to me really a lazy bit of reuse because he doesn't come with any arrows at all. And he doesn't have any of those weapons where he's gonna hold them with this strange two finger grip. And to make matters worse, on my copy, his right hand is frozen in place thanks to too much glue or paint applications. And this is where you see the separation where, I'm, where I've tried to twist and pull his hand out. But on the underside is where you see it's completely fused together because of all that over application of glue. Moving now to his lower body, it's the same dark grey stripes on the green plastic. His boots are that dark grey plastic as well, with the same detail on Storm Shadow with the stripes and the curved front of his shoe, but he's lacking that wash on those straps. So these boots, once again, also look really lazy. So overall, with the drop in quality control on my figure, the dull color scheme, lack of paint applications, this ends up a figure with no surprises. And I really feel it is quite uninspired and lazy. For articulation, he's got two ball joints, one at the top of his neck and one at the bottom, so he does spin his head 360. The two ball joints also combine to give him some decent sideways tilting that's slightly hindered by that rigid headgear. He can look up just that much, also hindered, and he looks down quite a decent bit. I did notice when messing around with the figure that there's a couple of fit issues. And you might have some plastic scuffing over here as the neck piece rubs against his torso. He does have some butterfly joints, but these are kind of stiff on mine and they do not move much, if at all. So they're a little useless to me. 
there's a swivel hinge at his shoulder so he goes all the way around and also with that soft plastic armor piece sliding out of the way you can get that arm out about that far upper bicep swivel for rotation double hinged elbows with those pins concealed and he's got decent range beyond 90 degrees but there's some hindrance from that armor plate swivel at the wrist for 360 spin as well as hinging down and up just a little bit he's got a mid torso hinge and a ball joint at the waist so that means they combine to give you that much forward range however i do notice not much play in that ball joint and he also does bend backward a little too much more than it is usable there's not much sideways tilting as i mentioned with not much play in that ball joint but you do get to rotate him all the way around 360 drop down ball joints at the hips that do not drop that much however you are able to get a good bit of sideways splits the hip ball joints can be a little stiff so you might just want to watch out for them but there's no problems forward and backward on mine upper thigh swivel for 360 spin double hinge at the knees for a very good range and those pins are also concealed swivel at the boot for 360 spin hinge at his ankles for good upward and downward tilt and finally a good range of ankle pivot outwards and inwards if you have the storm shadow action figure you will be more than familiar with the articulation on the reused body i also hope that you don't have the same qc issues and you're able to get some movement and posing out of his right hand this figure however suffers from really limited butterfly joints so to me that's a negative size wise nunchuck stands at just under six and a quarter inches or under 16 centimeters for comparisons here he is with a bunch of joes with the Cobra Ninjas, Destro and Baroness and here we have some Marvel Legends and some Star Wars Black Series Based on my own collecting experience, I have a generally good impression of the direction that the classified line is heading in terms of design and engineering. However, I must say that this is the weakest offering so far with uninspired design and paint choices doll accessories and plenty of missed opportunities to innovate and use new materials like soft goods for his headgear or some posable nunchucks instead of some soft gummy cheap plastic i was so looking forward to a modern six inch version of an action figure that i had as a kid but this one is a total disappointment and an absolute easy pass Please like and share this video, let me know what you think in the comments below, subscribe to my channel or even hit the super thanks button. Thanks for watching, take care and stay safe.